If you're one of the many people, like my husband, who's playing Pal World right now, then congratulations on playing a better Pokemon game than Nintendo will put out. <laughs> but also, you know that the litigious and ever vigilant <laughs> is currently investigating whether or not they intend to take legal action against the overnight success. Spoiler alert. We all know how these things go. That being said, even if Pal World is short-lived or succumbs to that monster tamer grind that whittles down successful monster taming games to naught, then there's still one RPG, one tabletop RPG, that can adapt to your needs. So, monster taming fans rejoice! Today, we're talking about Animon's story. Uh -uh. Hi there, my flock of nerds! Welcome to another video! If this is your first time here, thanks for stopping in. We love words, nerds, and birds on this channel. You can join my nerd flock by pecking that subscribe button, and if you find this video helpful, consider leaving it a like. And now, let's get into the meat of this discussion. Let's talk about Animon's story. Let me start by saying, if you're familiar with Gym Leader Ed and his videos on the monster taming genre, it's a really great channel and you should probably check it out if you like things like this, then you might have heard of another game called Animon Story. This is a video game and it's different and unrelated to this tabletop RPG indie darling. We're talking about Animon Story RPG by Zach Baru. This game uses pools of D6s to determine success and failure, but unlike some other D6 pool games, this one doesn't increase your odds of critical failure. Trust me, I have enough critical failures without help. Animon Story pays homage to properties like Digimon, Pokemon, Monster Rancher, and even indie darlings like Nexomon, Koromon, and yes, Pal World. All of these can fit into this simple and elegant TTRPG. One of the great things about Animon's story is that it's so accessible. Like, I would absolutely feel comfortable playing this with children. Yet, all I have to do for a darker game is adjust my story beats and themes. All flavor stuff for this system. Let's dive into some core elements of this TTRPG and introduce how it lets you play out stories like Pokemon, Digimon, Pal World, and beyond. The first thing to talk about in Animon's story is your player character. This has two parts, one kid character and one Animon with multiple forms. The two characters can be played by the same person, or if you want to mix it up, you can have one person play another person's Animon partner. Either way, it's a blast! Animon have forms that build upon previous iterations, allowing for abilities and features to stack. That means that each Animon retains the signature abilities of its previous forms. This works really well to demonstrate the growth journey of the characters, never forgetting where they come from. This growth is furthered by your kid character's virtue, which is like an ideal they embody. This drives dynamic moments in the story and may have as little or as much impact on the flavor of your game as you want. The core mechanic of Animon Story's gameplay is the conversation. Much like many other story-driven, narrative-focused games, things like Quest, Powered by the Apocalypse, and more. Tests compose the pin in the metaphorical plot grenade. Tests require d6 rolls and have a chance of failure that will have CONSEQUENCES for the direction of the story. The difficulty rating determines success and failure of rolls, and combat is functionally a set of opposed tests. One of my most favorite aspects about this RPG is the emphasis on failing forward. That means that if you fail on an ability check, an attack roll, or something else, the plot continues to progress, and you don't really get stopped in your tracks. Harm represents everything from emotional damage, emotional damage, to physical injury or duress, and it needs to be healed by resting. This is yet another brilliant opportunity for narrative in the game. We love a good beach episode. Friendship and the bond between Animon and Kid Character is another mechanic unique to this system that I really love. By pushing your Animon to go beyond their limits, you might actually cause bond strain, which can eventually lead to bond break. We'll talk more about those mechanics in a later video. 
For now, just know that these terms, while technically negative in tone, are less punitive and more like opportunities to explore drama between Animon and Kid character. This is one of my favorite aspects of the game. It doesn't shy away from internal party conflict, and it gives a mechanical reason for it to develop. This shows maturity and depth of thought on the author's part, and it's absolutely one of my favorite aspects of the system. The last thing I'll talk about in this intro is the Ana tool. This is an object, like a Digivice or a Pokegear, that lets the kid character interact with the world and with their animal. This thing might be a piece of technology or a magic item or anything else you can concoct with that bird brain of yours. And what's really cool is that this tool grows and develops with the kid character as they level up. Overall, Animon's story is a metaphor for developing and growing alongside your Animon partner, and it is one of the best indie RPGs I've ever encountered. So this is Animon's story in a nutshell. Have you played this awesome TTRPG? What do you like most about the monster taming genre? Whatever your thoughts, leave me a comment or heck, drop a bird emoji and let me know that you're part of the flock. Until next time, whether it's on the page or at the table, tell your story your way.